What is going on guys? This is again Shrix from Smarthood. Welcome to 48th Ruby tutorial. In this tutorial, I am going to teach you about method overriding. This is the part 4 topic of this inheritance guys. Now let's move forward. Let's see the basic concept of what is actually method overriding stands for. Now suppose we have a class parent like this class parent and within this we have a function parent underscore method and we have some codes here. Now we have another class child and there is the end end keyword. Now if we want this block of method to be inherited here then we have to inherit this parent class to this child very easy very simple. Now when we do this this block of codes come here and then if we initialize an object c equal to child dot new and call this function c dot parent underscore method then we will be able to access this codes now suppose in class child we don't want this method we want the other contents of this class parent but we don't want to access this codes now for that method overriding comes into action now we can define the same parent method again in class child def parent underscore method then within this method we can change our codes this is our new codes so so if we initialize object c equal to child dot new then c dot parent underscore method then this statement c dot method name it is not going to access this parent underscore method it is going to access this parent underscore method which is present in the class child like this so we will be able to access the new codes that we created so this was all about the concept of this method overriding now let's move forward now guys in order to save time i have already created these codes now here i have defined a class parent area this is the class content inside the class parent area i have defined a constructor there are two instance variable width and height and I have defined a method to calculate the area from this parent class. Now I have defined a second class which is child area. Now now let us inherit the parent area class. Let's say parent area. So as soon as we inherit this parent area this class so all these contents become the part of this class child area now let us create an object c child object dot new right now let us pass the parameters to initialize our width and height let's say 10 comma 20 20 yeah now let us now access the method get area let's say put us child object dot get area yeah now here our get area is empty now let us return some value return area from parent class is let's use interpolation and within this let's multiply width and height star at the rate height instance variable correct now let us save it and execute it here we go now when we initialize the variables with the help of child object then this will look for the constructor in the child area class now within the child area class we don't have any constructor so it is going to look for the constructor in this class parent area so our variables are initialized here width equal to 10 and height equal to 20 and after that when we write child obj dot get area then it is going to access the get area method of this child area now this child area class don't have any method named get area so definitely it will look for the method name in the parent area class so it is going to call this method get area from the parent area class so it is returning value area from the parent class is 10 into 20 that is 200 like this we are getting the output now 
what if if we want to modify the class we want to output like this area from child class is 200 like this so we just let's write let's copy it first and paste it here let's minimize it yeah area from the child class edit our comment also right now let's edit our this also child class is itna like this now let's save it and execute it yeah let's check the output here we go our output is now changed area from child class is 200 this is because now when child object dot get area is executed then it will look for the method get area first within the child area class now if inside the child area class we are having this method get area so this function is this time executed instead of the method in the parent area class so this statement is returned and printed area from child class is 200 like this now what if if we want to print this statement also and this statement also that is we want to print the both the statements so with the help of a single statement you want two outputs from two methods from these two get area methods so in order to call the get area method of the super class we just have to add a statement here let's say super like this yeah when child object dot get area is executed then this method is called within the child area class so after this when super is executed then this is going to call the get area method of the super class here super class is what our parent area so within this parent area we have method get area so area from parent class is 200 will be printed then after that after super we have this return value area from child class is this so both statements will be printed now let's save it and execute it let's save it and execute it oops i have done a mistake here guys i have to print it also let's write put s super now put s space super now let's check it out now let's save it and execute it yeah area from parent class is 200 then area from child class is 200 like this in this way with the help of the child object itself we are able to call the get area twice one from parent class and one from child class so things are pretty simple guys this was all about method overriding in ruby with the help of inheritance catch you guys in next tutorial and please don't forget to subscribe and please leave a comment below my video this is shrix from smartherd signing off